previously on Horrible Film Recaps. With the battery-powered shape mask, you'll be eliminating babysitters in no time at all. Don't touch my special collection of red dirt. <laughs> Guess what? I don't like you. I have a really good ghost story. And now, on to our feature presentation. The title of... Wait. Not another damn recap with a boat. Well, I guess I'm stuck doing this one. And I don't care what the title of the film is. I'm with him. Let's ditch this movie. Cause this has to be some kind of cruel jaws. He must be compensating for something. He shops at Amber Crumbie and Filth. They're going to clean off plaque on the teeth of that big mouth bass. He calls into the local DJ to request smoke on the water. Oh look, a blurry of activity. The DJ plays tiny bubbles, but the filthy seaman wanted smoke on the water. Since these dolphin haven't gotten any fish for days, they can't say so long. Terry Bollier is hiding out in Florida, as not to be sued for copyright infringement by Hulk Hogan. Terry and the NWO, AKA, not world order, discuss which of these cans is not like the others. Waiting for the real clown makeup to arrive. The wannabe clowns apply grade D makeup from the Tibetan plateau. That must be one giant roast in that bag. Will somebody please draw that before it goes bad? The budget for this film could not afford a real cigar, so a Bob Evans big boy was substituted instead. One of the marina rules you can't see is don't eat the Tootsie Rolls you find on the sand. So as not to be sued by Universal, this movie is now called Beverly Hills 91804. It doesn't matter what comes, fresh goes better in life, with mentors fresh and full. The fresh maker. Fabio would have helped this woman, but his beautifulness would get wet. And she's only being attacked by stock footage. After being denied fish, the seal bides its time. And these people will regret that decision. The rowdy punk hooligan troop are up, up to no good. And wait for the blue of night to pull some shenanigans, like making girls run away and humping on those that wear white after Labor Day. They break into the dolphin pool using a credit card they made out of clay. They won't even paint Aunt Becky's fence, and they decide to overfeed the dolphin by one fish, but they are chased away by Terry and the rockin' wrestler. They find the bag, but it's only a red herring. Fabio is in police custody because he is too beautiful for this movie. After deputizing the door, it tried to draw psycho pay. Because it was unhinged, Billy Cranston studies the only shark-related images that aren't owned by Universal Pictures. Officer Duffy asks him if he thinks one of those sharks shot J.R., but Billy is under the age of 50, so doesn't understand the question. Scarves do not make for good brass. Terry reads to the little girl from the WWF program for January 1st, 1986 at St. Louis, Missouri Keel Auditorium. She passes out instantly from boredom. Welcome to the all-white lame dance party. No rhythm allowed. She won't drown. Her butt is a flotation device. I know they didn't do it in the water, but did the shark just pop? It's cherry. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Just OK, the stupid friends gather for a meeting. Officer Duffy uses his really long bullet to indicate on the map to test his weather forecasting skills. <laughs> Universal executives scan the film for copyrighted scenes from the Jaws movies. Thank God, the camouflage keeps them hidden from the shark. 
Officer Duffy watches what he thinks is International Master Criminal Benji. But this dog's been neutered. The army guys finally spot a shark in the stock footage area of the water. As he prepares to fire, he is unaware of another stock footage shark lurking around. Patrick Duffy hauls us as he realises he is in Mitch Buchanan's jurisdiction. Terry Bollier will face Billy, the brainless Hanan at the Senior Center craft room tonight at 4 p.m. Universal Copyright Cops haul in the fake orca that blew out a tire trying to escape. It's the lesser known fourth Columbus ship. Just drive your car right through. They also can buff and shine your rear bumper hitch. Okay, everybody start your engines, says the man with the dopey mustache and matching visor. The shark forgot its tools and cannot unbolt the fence but it did remember to bring its razor-sharp teeth to rip apart the puny net. Terry sees that the cameraman is too close, and if he doesn't zoom out, there will be hell to pay. Attack of the killer tomatoes! Attack of the killer tomatoes! Terry gently exclaims, I've been hanging out in the Garden of Eden with my main squeeze eat. I know 20,000 leagues under the sea, 40 nights and 40 days. I hung and bung of a Titanic. Come on, losers, win that race. Yeah, come on, losers. He must have bet on the guy in the yellow trunks to win the race. I don't know why these people are scared. Killer tomatoes can't breathe on dry land, even foam. The dolphin with rabies looked more convincing. Give us that Billy Idol sneer. Oh wait, there's a rare stock footage shark. There appears to be a problem here. Don't play with your food. Oh, it's a herd of calves. The shoddy looking shark inspects the shoddy work of the platform. Out of the way. King Tut is here for emergency appendectomy. Ooh, Saturday night's main elevator, pre-recorded from the Hartford, Connecticut Civic Center. All these years I thought the shark's mouth was his butt. Now I know better. He thinks the boat levers control the bridge. On the way to hunt the shark, Officer Duffy can't wait to get donuts, so he ignores traffic signals. If fish want to start some shit, old Jack Burton will be ready. Sega's new handheld system is ten times better than the Nintendo Switch. Stock footage has that effect on some people. Sometimes the Antarctic shark will nudge its potential mate. This can be felt 7,915.14 miles away. Boat propellers make great back scratches. Terry tunes his spear gun to the key of F. Warning, blatant reuse of a joke coming up. <laughs> Fresh maker. The head of Universal Studios shows up to dispense some copyrighted justice. Officer Duffy sees them and decides to block them out with hi-fi stereo and go fishing instead. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Roger, ready to move out. And now for your viewing pleasure, the unedited director's cut of the infamous helicopter scene. Enjoy. Just like shooting fish in the ocean. <laughs> Just like no. You're doing a good job crashing. Should I be doing this now? This seems right. Damn it. Billy, using his orangutan-scented marker, indicates on the map for everyone to converge on the red circle. Don't leave your map just lying around. It's a tantalizing treat for robbers. The map tells the robbers exactly where the map is. 
Since the robbers can't understand the strange symbols, they take it to have it translated for them, finding the deck hands at rest. The robbers sneak into the human cooler for sandwiches. Billy is startled to find his map. Orangutan's scented marker and picnic basket have all been swiped. One of the robbers has on his tight prison underwear. Terry has emerged from his snack-induced cooler sleep. The diver falls right into the waiting mouth of the shark. It's probably hard for the shark to roar with that body in its mouth. The trickster is finally taken down by the stock footage from Jaws 1 and 2. It must be somebody's birthday. They're making candles. Oh my god, the shark is flying, thinks Terry but soon realises he's looking at a sea pigeon. It is quite important to check your sea lawn for seaweeds regularly. Terry concludes his binoculars are defective since they only work when he opens his eyes, so grabs another pair. Seeing this stupidity, Squidward decides to exit the film. <laughs> They finally find the copyright footage generator is on and fully functioning. As they pull Billy onto the boat, Terry urgently asks, Where is his glasses? He can't see without his glasses. But in their arrogance and delusion, they shattered the pure copyright. After killing the blue-eyed shark, his judgment cometh, and right soon, with an explosion, Another Hulk Hogan ripoff, ironically named Rip, has taken his look alike family on a no holds barred trip to the dolphin show at Seapool. But the Hulkster has sent in a robotic spy, and now he will feel the wrath of the Hulkamaniacs run wild. Brother, fire the Universal Studios space laser. Oh, these two think they're going to get away, do they? Send in a copyright kill squad. I want those two dead now. Do you copy? What the hell? Just fire all weapons. This concludes the movie recap. And now Free Willy can rule the universe. Good day to you all. If you enjoy my nonsensical ramblings, please like, subscribe and leave a comment.